This morning, I'll be sharing with us on a very important subject. We are looking generally at the subject of enlargement and I've been instructed to share with us on enlargement by the word. And so this morning, we'll look at scriptures and then we trust the Lord for an encounter. Can you lift your hands one more time? And ask the Lord to encounter you. It's the freshness of the word that makes the difference. We can hear God for a million years and not be ex exhausted. Because every time he speaks, he comes fresh. Can you ask God for an encounter this morning? Ask him to minister to your heart. To bring you transformation. To bring you empowerment. And most importantly, to bring you enlargement. In another one minute, I want you to talk to God. Spirits are legalistic beings. God wants to hear what you have to say. And so this is not the time to look around. Vocalize your expectations. Ask the Lord to minister to you this morning. Tell him your heart is open to receive. Tell him you want more. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Again, Lord, we ask that you bring us the freshness of your word. And we ask that lives will be transformed. We ask that you grant encounters that will change our stories forever. And make us instrumental and significant figures in the advancement of your kingdom. By the empowerment of your grace. Take all the praise, take all the honor. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. You may be seated. God bless you. You may be seated. My time is very short, so I'm being careful to go straight to the business. Hallelujah. Isaiah 54 verse 1 and 2 is an anchor scripture for a conference like this, given the title. The scriptures admonish us to enlarge our coast, to stretch forth our borders he says to lengthen our cords and so the first thing i want us to note from the scripture is the fact that enlargement is not just god's responsibility there is a cooperation on your part that will make that happen that scripture did not tell us that god will just enlarge our coast it says you enlarge your coast he said you stretch forth your borders he said you lengthen thy cords he said do not withhold then you will take over and so it's important for us to understand that as much as god in his benevolence will pour upon us his grace pour upon us all that he has to make for an enlargement there is a responsibility on our part that will make it happen the excellency of the word makes it natural and supernaturally so that the word will always engender enlargement. But we must know how to cooperate with the word in order to bring enlargement to our world. Just touch the keyboard for me. Touch it for me. Give me some floating chords. At some point, I may need to ascend. Praise God. <laughs> it is in the nature of the world to orchestrate enlargement and you see that from the very first verse of the scripture Genesis chapter 1 from verse 1 and 2 the Bible said in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and we saw the instrument God used in creating the whole world in its limitless expanse. We saw that the infrastructure that was used to create this massive and boisterous creation was the word of God. He said, the Lord, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And he said, the earth was void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. And God said, let there be light. So the instrument for creation the instrument for enlargement 
is the word of God spoken when the Spirit of God moves. He said, and the Spirit moved upon the face of the deep, and God said. So whenever you want to have enlargement, the word of God must go forth when the Spirit of God is moving. And so it becomes your responsibility to know the word to speak part time if you will have enlargement. A man who is bankrupt of the word of God is a man that will suffer obscurity in his existence. If you want your capacity to be enlarged, if you want your word to be enlarged, then you must do business with the word of God. Because the whole realms as we see it was created by the word. The whole realm as we see it was reconstructed by the word. And the whole realm as we see it is sustained by the word. In fact, after God created the world, we saw that he went further to create the man. Genesis 1, 26. And he said, God said, let us make man in our own image, after our likeness. And we saw that after he created the man, he wanted the man to also enlarge, to fill the whole earth. And the instrument God used again was the word of God. He said, and the Lord blessed them. And the Lord said, be fruitful, multiply replenish subdue have dominion so he created this massive world by speaking and when he created the man and wanted the man to dominate this world he still went to speak so there is something about the word of god that we must understand if we will leave this conference enlarged because that is god's raw material for enlargement the reason many live life in obscurity is because they are bankrupt of the word of god if god himself who has all the powers will resort to the world in order to see enlargement then you can never see enlargement until you know how to do business with the word of god this is why this aspect of the conference is very important in hebrews chapter 11 from verse 1 to 3 the bible began to reveal to us and it began to show us how this world was created organically speaking he said now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen he said by it the elders obtain a good report and he said through faith we understand that the walls were created by the word of god and the things which are were not made from the things which appear so this world was created by the word of god the things which are were not made out of the things which appear so it goes to mean that anything you want to see is already encapsulated in the word of god any expanse you want to have is already encapsulated in the word of god so you may be looking and there is nothing appealing if you have the word you have enough because what you want to see does not have to be what you are seeing what you want to see does not have to have appeared if you have the word of god you can make it appear because this word was framed by the word of god and the things that we see are made from the things that are unseen but the instrument that makes the unseen seen is the word of god so you can come you would have come to this conference maybe you need enlargement in the area of your finances maybe you need enlargement in the area of your family maybe you need enlargement in the area of kingdom advancement you may not have seen it every circumstance may have suggested that is not possible all you need is to catch a word if you get a word that thing may not have been there but the word can make it happen because it is intrinsically imputed in the world to create what is not by the word of god he said this is how god operated the things that were created were not created from the things that are they were created from the things that are not and the raw material for bringing those things to life the bible said is the word of god so anybody who catches the word of god becomes a candidate for enlargement this is why when jesus left this world he selected few disciples and he gave them a commandment in acts chapter 1 verse 8 he said go into all the worlds go into all the worlds and disciple all nations not many days from now you shall receive the holy ghost and power and you shall be witnesses unto me from jerusalem to samaria to judea and to the uttermost part of the earth and you look around how many people are you talking to 
you are talking to 12 men how can 12 men be so enlarged to take the gospel to the ends of the earth the apostles had understanding in acts chapter 6 verse 4 they said although numerically speaking we are few but there is a raw material that if we subscribe to or we, our our number will no longer count we may be 12 today we may be 70 we may be 120 we may be 500 but if we tap into the economy of the world the world will become too small for us so our number is not a limitation how much world we carry is what is needed and so they said to themselves in acts chapter 6 verse 4 we are not many but there is something we know we will give ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the world if we get the world we can take samaria if we get the world we can take jerusalem if we get the world we can take judea if we get the world we shall take the uttermost part of the earth i came to announce to somebody you may be one man in that territory it doesn't matter the question is how much world have you carried in your spirit if you carry enough world you can subdue a territory if you carry enough world you can subdue a nation if you carry enough world you can subdue a generation the problem are not lack or presence of physical asset the problem is a bankruptcy of the word of god and so a generation must rise that does business with the world when you start doing business with the world you come to where god dwells you come to where god function no wonder the bible calls him the word of god it said in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god it said he was in the beginning with god it said all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made without him was not anything made that was made a ministry can come out of the world prosperity can come out of the world wisdom can come out of the world power can come out of the world the question is how much world do you carry that's why the bible said carry with you walls people carry money about people carry fame about people carry human connection about all of that have their own benefits at certain level but i tell you the greatest insurance that you will carry that will make you survive anywhere is the word of god the bible said carry with you words when you leave this conference don't just carry friends when you leave this conference don't just carry pictures when you leave this conference don't just carry human connection carry with you words this is why words are coming to you every minute because you must catch something the greek word is katalambano you must catch something and so when you live here for some of you you will carry the word of power for some of you you will carry the word of wisdom for some of you you will carry the word of establishment that is what will make you colonize your world i prophesy over someone this morning you will catch your word now with you words how can jesus look at few men not educated fishermen and he told them do you know how big the world is jerusalem their heart will be beating how can we take over the whole jerusalem we are only fishermen all we know is the river where we fish and he didn't stop there he now added judea somebody would have wanted to say lord that's enough he now added samaria no you are going to the land of the gentile he now said the uttermost part of the world so it's not your number that matter what do you carry i came to tell someone today if you catch one word your word will change quit looking at yourself your gender does not count your skin color does not count your nation does not count what word do you carry in your spirit if you carry the right words nations will bow you will conquer nations for jesus it doesn't matter what age you have it doesn't matter what skin color what word do you have in your spirit all things were created by him without him was not anything made that was made i don't just want to talk and quote scriptures to you this morning i came to show you this morning the ministry of the world if you understand how the world works you will take your word you will not only just be enlarged but you will take your words the apostle said we will not give ourselves to tables there are many persons who are looking for food 7 a.m in the morning where is breakfast ah i'm dying no that's not how to live your life they said we will not give ourselves to tables there are many people competing to have position i need to be i must be treasurer 
I must be finance secretary. I must be choir coordinator. I must be the resident pastor. That doesn't matter. We will not give ourselves to tables. Because when you catch the world, positions will come out of it. When you catch the world, influence will come out of it. When you catch the world, relevance will come out of it. We will not give ourselves to tables. They said we will give ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the world. If there is an understanding you should have about the word of God, it is the understanding of the ministry of the world. How does the world work? That's what I want to share with you quickly this morning. There are three things about the ministry of the world. Number one is the technology of engaging the world. Number two, it is the system of receiving the world. And number three is the way of deploying the world. You need to know how to engage the world. You need to know how to receive the world. And you also need to know how to deploy the world or put the world to work. If you know these three things, then you have understood the ministry of the world. And if you know it, you are ready, not just for enlargement, but to take your word. Let me begin quickly by showing us how to engage the word of God. In engaging the word of God, there are two things. Number one, you engage the word, and the word engages you. That's the first thing in the ministry of the world. And Paul was talking to Timothy and he was teaching him and he began to tell Timothy three ways of engaging the world. In 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 13, he said, until I come, ah, the fathers, there is something they know. You know, like every one of us here, young people, our pride is to snap with a big man of God and put it out and say, look at me when I slap with Daddy Gio. That's what we look for. We go out and the story we want to tell is that I was in that Geo's house for two weeks. What did you catch when you went there? You want to tell everybody, I took a picture. I was with him. What did you catch? Now, there's nothing wrong in celebrating your encounters with them. If I snap with him, I will upload it. So don't get me wrong. But the question is, he carries much more than a picture to offer. Said, don't go out telling people, I am Timothy, Paul's protege. Don't go out telling people, I am Timothy, I know Paul, I have access to Paul. He said, there is a more important business to do. He said, until I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, and to doctrine. He said, give thyself wholly to these things. He said, thy profiting will be made manifest to all. The reason we have been in church for five years, for ten years, but we are not enlarged enough for our generation to recognize it, is because we have not given attendance to the world. If you want to be enlarged, you must do business with the world. You must engage the world. And in engaging the world, Paul showed us three things. Number one, he said, read it. Read it. Read it. When you read the word, you become acquainted to the world. There are many persons seated here this morning, and I don't mean to be derogatory. Tell them, open Malachi, they will go to New Testament. And they said they want to take over their world. They sit on Twitter, sit on Instagram, sit on Facebook, not because they are hearing the word of God. They are just there watching pictures, liking and clicking. You tell them, where is Nehemiah? They are looking at the end of the Old Testament. You say, okay, no problem. Check the book of Esther. They are checking New Testament. And they said, I've heard something. Any question you ask them from the Bible, they can't give you a precise answer. They will tell you, well, somebody said, they will never tell you John 3.16, Matthew 4.12, Luke 10.35. They will never quote scripture for you because they are not aware of it. And you know why? They are not acquainted. They have not given themselves to reading. A man who wants to do business with the world, when you wake up in the morning, before you talk to anybody on earth, you check the Bible. I read, I heard, I watched a clip a few years ago when the GEO was sharing that they went to the United States of America for a conference. It said many pastors came from Nigeria and marked the world, many. Today, how many are there? When you say Christianity in Nigeria today, the two names he called, are the first two names you will call. Meanwhile, 
there were many in their ranks that put how can you put money together bought flight ticket traveled all the way to the u.s and in the morning they were making friends snapping pictures and he said because there was nowhere to do his quiet time he had to go to the toilet and when he went to the toilet he read when he was done reading and praying as he stepped out lo and behold he collided with daddy kumuyi he too went to do the same out of the many pastors that left nigeria only two were studying no wonder today they are the two leading patriarchs because if you do business with the world it will show it cannot deny itself the moment you catch the world something comes out of your spirit they went to study there was nowhere to study they went to the toilet today we have places to study but we will never sit on the wall pause give attendance to reading that's the first way to engage the world the second way to engage the world is to study the world and he showed us two ways of studying the world he said number one through exhortation and he said number two through doctrine what is exhortation you listen to a man who has understanding in a dimension of the world so you will catch his own sonnesses how does he interpret love how does he interpret power how does he interpret fasting when you listen then you go from exhortation you go and carry the bible for yourself you carry your concordance you click the word love every scripture that captures love you study all of it so that you too will have your own understanding of what love is you go to the scripture you type the word power every word that comes out you click it you study all those verses so that when you are talking power you know what you are saying it's not because somebody said it it's because you too have paid the price to search that's why he was telling timothy in second timothy 2 15 he says study to show thyself approved a watchman unto god that need not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth so when i say power i will not neglect the explanation that was given in genesis and contradict it with the one that was given in malachi or in luke i would have compared all of them together so i have an understanding of what power is so in order to engage the world you begin with reading and then you go into study reading will make you become aware of the world study will make you understand the world but you don't stop there you now go to the third level the third level is to meditate he said to timothy meditate on these things meditate on these things what is meditation as you are reading or as you are studying you may notice that one verse will stand out you write that verse down sometimes as you are reading and as you are studying three verses will stand out you will keep those verses aside when you are done reading you will now carry those verses and begin to chew it meditation is not reading meditation is not studying meditation is talking the word to yourself so you carry the verses that stood out when you were reading and you start talking it because the word meditation is the word hagar it means to mutter to mutter so you were reading john chapter one and as you were reading two three verses from the beginning stood up in the beginning was the word the word was with god and the word was god the same was in the beginning with god all things were made by him without him was not anything made that was made in him was life the life was the light of men and you go back again in the beginning was the word the word was with god and the word was god the same was in the beginning with god all things were made by him without him was not anything made that was made in him was life the life was the light of men you go back again when you're talking to yourself at the tenth time something will begin to happen to you you will now notice that the vibration of your spirit will begin to align with the energy of that word after a while the word that you pick from the bible will be made flesh it is when the word is made flesh that you have power through the word because the word that created the world had to become flesh to dwell among us if the word is not made flesh to you it cannot dwell with you and if the word does not dwell with you you cannot behold his glory and if you don't behold his glory you cannot manifest the grace that is in that word so why reading gives you awareness understand uh, studying gives you understanding meditation makes the world to become flesh and when the word becomes flesh then the word becomes power when the world becomes flesh the world becomes wisdom when the world becomes flesh the world becomes wonder that is why joshua chapter 1 verse 8 he said this book of the law should not depart not from your brain 
when you read it's in your brain when you study it's in your brain he said this book of the law should not depart out of thy way thy mouth he said thou shalt what mutter it hagar it day and night you shall mutter it you shall hagar it day and night so meditation is not something you do when you go to the library meditation is not something you do when you are in church when you wake up in the morning the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he maketh me lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside the still waters he restored my soul yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i fear no evil for thou art with me that is hagar as you are talking it you are talking it every scripture you have studied every scripture you have read will suddenly become flesh and then something will happen to you as you get to the level of meditation you will now discover the world will begin to engage you because when you engage the world the world will engage you so in that same scripture proverbs 1 verse 8 he said when you meditate it upon it day and night he now went to the third layer he said that thou mightest observe to do according to what is written therein so when the world begins to engage you what the world demands of you is obedience many have not journeyed to the level of obedience when you start reading the word studying the word meditating on the word the word will become a law to you the first thing the word does to you is to judge you the word will check you the word will refine you in second timothy 2 16 and 17 he said every scripture is given by the inspiration of god and he said it is profitable for doctrine for reproof for instruction and for correction in righteousness that the man of god might be complete thoroughly furnished unto every good work you have to read study and meditate when you meditate the word will start talking to you that's when the word will tell you this is your exaggeration you have to stop it this is your lying you have to stop it because perhaps you are fornicating no bad boys are aware and you come to church you have a good voice you stand up there and you sing with your golden voice well that is a gift it will not take you far trust me everybody making impact in this world there are three forces that rule them their gift the word of god and the presence of god many people only have gift so they come and sing and preach intelligently but they are fornicators they are liars they will never see the power of god they will never see the honor of god they will never see the glory of god when the word of god begins to engage you there is one purpose he wants is to stop everything in you that is not conformed with the image of christ that's why i say we all with open faces beholding us in the glass second corinthians 3 18 we are changed from glory to glory the word will change you the word will transform you before the word becomes powerful through you there are many people who jump about quoting scripture when you quote scriptures demon will ask you by what authority have you come because the last time they checked you followed their servants in fornicating the last time they checked you followed their servant in manipulation the last time they checked you followed their servants in cutting corners and then you come to the public because you are wearing suit and tie you start giving them commandment they will ask you are you not part of our servants that are fornicators are you not part of our servants that are liars who told you you can come here and quote scripture and so for you to be powerful in the world and for the world to be powerful in you the world will first of all become a law to you that's why the bible said the standard of the law standard sure second timothy 2 19 he said therefore the lord knoweth them that are his he said they that named the name of the lord must depart from iniquity he said in a great house there are many vessels some unto honor and some unto dishonor he said if a man purges himself if a man purges himself he said that is when that man will become a vessel of honor that is when that man will be qualified to be used of the master he said come out of among them touch not the unclean things he said they that named the name of the lord they must be holy this is the word engaging you you would have read it you would have studied it one day you wake up and the word will tell you come out from among them touch not the unclean thing they that bear the vessels of god must be holy for you that has become a commandment if you will be great in god you must obey that commandment in fact they can pour a drum of oil on you they can lay hands on you a thousand times you will not amount to anything 
They can prophesy over you from January to December. You will not amount to anything because the word will make sure you cannot go beyond your level of obedience. I'm telling you, this is what the apostles knew. He said, we'll give ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. You must do business with the word until the word becomes a law to you. And I will shock you. Some of the things the word will tell you will not be written in the Bible. He said, knowing this first, no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. He said, holy men of God spake as they were carried by the spirit of God. So there are words that will come to you from the throne. Many years ago, I was a football fan. I then follow of Arsenal. I could analyze the records from the beginning of the club up to the year 2002 as a football fan. One day, I was going to watch football and God told me, your party is over. Watching football is not a sin, but I was engaging the world. Now the world wants to engage me. The kind of ministry I've given you, you can't combine it with football. That is enlargement. The reason out of the many million young ministers, I was the one invited is because I obeyed that word. You are a man. There's a level you can never get to until you obey the word. I disobeyed for six months. When it's Saturday, my whole body begins to itch. I will stand up and say, I want to buy something and stroll and pass where they are watching football. And I'll say, okay, let me just check the score. I will enter to check the score line. And then, ah, uh, what is this striker doing? I will now sit down and sit down till match is over. And every time match is over, my conscience will begin to fight me. You have disobeyed again. You have disobeyed again. You have disobeyed. Until I started begging God to help me. And when God started helping me, even when I go into the match, as I sit down, I doze off. I now knew that my path was over. It was in that obedience that a new road was created. That was when I began to sense the pathway of the apostolic ministry. That was when I began to read the scrolls of Zion. That is when I began to see the things that were written concerning me before the foundations of the world. He told Jeremiah, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I know you. I knew you. You didn't come after you were born. You existed before you were born. When you were an intangible seed of eternity, that was when I started doing business with you. But I needed you to recognize me in time for me to work with you. He said, I ordained you to be a prophet. The word ordination means an established pathway. And for you to walk in that path, only obedience can take you there. And so anybody who wants to be enlarged, anybody who wants to be mighty in God, must engage the world and he must allow the world to engage him. When you engage the world and the world engages you, you will move from perception to understanding to world made flesh and you will come into obedience. By the time you come here, you are ready to take over your world. That's the first layer of the ministry of the world. Some of you will leave this conference and until the end of the year, you will come under a rigid government. The Holy Ghost will tell you, read the New Testament every month. And when you check at your reading pace, it may take you three hours of reading every day to be able to meet up. Your life will change. That's why the part of those who are of God is narrow. You don't have the luxury of creativity. All your life will be weaved into the paths of obedience. And if you want to be big in God, that is the way you will go. The path will be narrow and the way will be very tiny. So much so that you cannot come through with your garbage. Some of you will leave this conference and God will push you on a long fast because there is something on your inside that wants to break open. He said, they that believe out of their bellies shall flow rivers of living waters. That means everybody sitting here is a fountain of rivers. But that river will never flow until you come under the rigid government of the world. The first infrastructure in the ministry of the world is to engage the world and have the world engage you. And I can shock you this morning to tell you that some people have been Christians for 10 years, but they have not known this. All they know about God are things they pick from different altars randomly. It's not even coordinated. So much so that even if anything happened in their lives, they can't tell what was responsible for it because they have been moving about with random information. And for such people, the Bible calls them children. It said they are tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. It said for such people who are children, 
the kingdom cannot be committed to them how will you be enlarged if the kingdom is not committed to you i speak over someone this morning the grace to do business with the word of god receive it now Elohim Adonai Elohim Adonai Elohim Elohim Adonai Elohim Elohim Jesus after enduring the pain of death dying being buried for three days and then he rose from the dead and he looks at a handful of people and commit everything he lived and died for to them the largest number of the disciples that the Bible mentioned was 500 that's the largest Meanwhile, out of this 500, it was 120 the Holy Ghost came upon. So it was 120 that actually did the work. Turn and look around you. See how many people are standing here. In thousands. If 120 men took their generation. And then you look at our fathers. Sometimes when I look at the RCCG family, I'm wondering, I say, what is this? You go to the United States, it's a mammoth crowd. You go to Europe, it's a mammoth crowd. You go to Africa, it's uncountable. And I said, only one man and few people imparted the word like this. I can imagine what it looked like in the 70s and in the 80s when they started. And then in our own generation, we have camp meetings, 100,000 people gather. Who cannot affect one state? Five, four, 120 disciples of Jesus took their generation. We see in our own fathers, less than 120 took their generation. We are in hundreds of thousands and we put ourselves in number that has no impact. We come for conference, 100,000 people gather. We leave that conference. You will not hear news from any state that after they left the camp meeting, Oshoko went on fire. After they left the camp meeting, Lagos went on fire. After they left the camp meeting, Manchester, you will never hear such things. And the next year, we gather again and we take pride in our number. Number that counts for nothing. Because there is no power in the spirit. He said, the apostles ordained deacons. And he said, Philip, one man, went to Samaria 
he preached Christ there and the whole city one man so they reduced from 120 they started apportioning one man per city imagine if we were sharing cities to all of us who are here how many cities are we going to take in one month but how many have the capacity this is why we need enlargement enlargement is not so that you go and buy car enlargement is so that you go and take a city because the bible said you are a city set upon a hill until your capacity become as big as a city you have not started every one of us is a city and so until we take over cities we have not started i don't know what your burdens are but i told myself we will not leave this world until we double what the fathers have done because they taught us they imparted us we drank from them if we don't double what they have done we failed our generation and so for from this conference those who are three times four times ten times bigger than our geo must rise from here that is when this conference would have made meaning imagine the auditorium you are standing in how many thousand people come how can you build something like this and say you want to run service what kind of faith is that what are they seeing imagine where we are standing here somebody built something like this and say he's coming to hold service what do they know what have they touched and you come to a place like this you are able to sleep you are making friends snapping pictures come on come on so river flow river flow let it down a river flow in your church once again let it on it be seen river flow river flows let it down a river flow in your church once again let it on it be seen you know what i'm looking forward to that when this conference is over somebody will go and lock himself up for prayer and fasting for 120 days until he has an encounter and from next year most of us will walk to pastor and say pastor send me to a local government i want to take it over for jesus most of us will come pastor send me to this city i want to take it over for jesus i have received too much to just come here warming tables and before you start that every sunday hundred people will come to church because you were in that church because something would have broken out of you that's what i'm looking forward to that a church of hundred will become ten thousand a church of ten thousand will become hundred thousand because one man is becoming a forest that's what enlargement is something that cannot be explained but that cannot be denied sit down for a moment thank you The first protocol of the ministry of the world is to engage the world. The second protocol of the ministry of the world is to receive the world. When you start obeying the world, the world will start coming to you. Jesus speaking in Matthew 4 verse 4, he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word spoken from the mouth of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every rema that comes from God. So you are doing business with the Logos. When you graduate to obeying the Logos, then the ministry of the rema is open. The word will start coming to you. You will wake up in the morning and you will hear. You are in the middle of a business, you will hear. Now, when you discover that that begins to happen you will not relax and say now the world comes to me you will enter the second phase of the ministry of the world because there are things you must do to keep the world coming obedience is what opens that door but when that door opens there are things you must do to keep the world coming to you this is where you start graduating because you will move from perception to understanding to word made flesh to obedience but that's not your destination 
Your destination is power. Your destination is wisdom. Your destination is glory. But you are progressing from somewhere. It is when the word begins to come to you that you will start seeing power. Make no mistakes about it. You will see our father sit down and they will casually say, everybody here sick, be healed. Everybody trusting God for the fruit of the womb, receive it. They are hearing something. Please make no mistakes about it. These men literally live in the realms of the Rema. God talks to them every day. God talks to them continually. In fact, in many circumstances, before it happens, God has already spoken to them. A senior friend of mine was sharing with me and he said, there was a period of time that he just started falling sick. Life was leaving him and he was vomiting. And he felt a prompting in his spirit. Go and see Pastor E. Adeboe. And he said, ah, I'm dying. Doctors don't know what to say. I'm deep in business now. My negotiations are almost, you know, completed. How can I leave all the way now and start going to redemption camp? He said, go and see him. And the man left everything and came. And when he visited God's servant, daddy sat down and they brought him to him. And when he came, he told him, you are not sick. How did you know, sir? I've not said anything. Who told you? He said, you are not sick. He said, but if this thing happening to you did not happen, you would not have come here. Now that you have come, sit down, you are okay. When you leave me, you will not vomit again. <laughs> it's you that think impact and influence is to wear a suit and act in a certain way. You will be joking. When demons mess up with you, you will know that this thing is more than suit. And when he sat down, he began to tell him about the assignment God has called him to. When he finished with him, he was going. He now said, wait, do you have ships? He said, yes, I have vessels on the sea. He said, are they insured? He said, of course, my manager will always insure. He said, no, they will steal one of your vessels this night. The man said, no, 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 it's not possible that my vessels are insured. They insure one vessel for 20 million. So it's not a mistake that you can make casually. <laughs> that they laughed and said, it's well with you. He now left and called his manager immediately because he had seen some things already not to take the words for granted. Are those vessels insured? The manager said, wait, let me call somebody. He called. He said, I'm sorry, sir. They have not been insured. He started panicking. What is the meaning of this? How can you do this mistake? Something you have done for more than one decade. He said, vessels are not insured. Lo and behold, that evening, pirates got the vessel and stole the vessel. Are, are you a sailor? How did you know? They have done business with the world so much that before a situation comes, they are already aware. Did you not read about Samuel? Before, before Saul came to Samuel, God told him, by this time tomorrow, the man that comes to you, anoint him as king. I'm telling you, I'm using our father here so that you, you know him. So it will make meaning to you. And there are things you know that I don't know. By this time tomorrow, the man that comes to you, anoint him as king. The word of the Lord. That one is not I read. That one came to him. It's the proceeding word. That's what makes men powerful. That's what makes men wise. That's what impacts faith. That's what makes men overcomers. That is what enlarges men. The man had to run back. And he said, don't worry. It will be found in three days. He went. They called in Tapo. Called this one. Called that one. And when he was frustrated on the third day, he went to sit somewhere in an eatery. And when he sat down there, he heard some people talking about the vessel. He now called the officers and they arrested those people. That was how they got the vessel on the third day. A man just sat down in his office and he's changing things all over. From that day, this man I'm talking to you have built more than 30 churches. Because he encountered some... Do you think... RCCG is just spreading everywhere because they love his face. There are things that are in the bowels that when he alters them, nations quake. And if you will become bigger, you must get to that point where you too, the world comes to you. And there are five things you will do for the world to begin to come to you in addition to obedience. Number one, ask in prayer. You need to sit down 
and pray, God, open my understanding. God, open my eyes to behold wondrous things from thy word. Because it is God that will open your eyes to behold wondrous things. There are wonders in the word of God. But if your eyes are not open, you will not see them. Open my eyes that I might behold wondrous things in thy word. And when God opens your eyes, that one verse you knew from primary school, you will open it and see a different thing. And then what you will see will now change your world. Open my eyes. Paul was praying for the church. In Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 17, he said, For this cause, I bow down my knees and pray to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, that he may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know. And he mentioned three things. Number one, the hope of your calling. Number two, the exceeding greatness of the riches that is in the light for the saints. And number three, he said the exceeding greatness of his power that he wrought when he rose Christ from the dead. So if you don't pray for your eyes to be open, you may read the Bible and never see power. You may read the Bible and never see favor. You may read the Bible and never see the blessing. So in addition to obedience, we must pray for our understanding to be enlightened. For our spirits to open, to catch the world. Because every word you catch can change your world. What brings enlargement are the proceeding word of God. There are many theologians today who can quote all the verses of the Bible, but they don't catch any rema. Because although they have studied, they are blind. It is when you obey and begin to pray that the word comes to you. Number two, what do you do to catch the word? Fasting. Exodus 34. Verse 28 and 29. Moses went to the mountain. And the Bible said he was there 40 days without food or water. And immediately he said the commandments were given to him. So when a man stays in God's presence in fasting and prayer, amongst other things, the word comes to him. Why do you think Jesus was operating in the Rema so effortlessly when, when the devil came to him in Matthew chapter 4? If you are the son of God, turn these stones to bread. That's not the time to go and start reading Genesis to Revelation. The challenges of life, when they confront you, you need instant response from the spirit. But Jesus already knew that he was going to be tempted. Because the Bible said in Matthew 4, 1, the spirit led him to the wilderness to be tempted. And because he knew that he cannot start shuffling the world at that time, he went ahead of the devil, fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And when the devil spoke, if you are the son of God, turn these stones to bread. Immediately, Deuteronomy 8.3 opened up. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. Every challenge that came, there was a rema. Every challenge that came, there was a rema. Why? He was in fasting. When you sit in the place of fasting, the word comes alive. Number three, kingdom service. If you want the word to come to you, you must be neck deep in kingdom service. You cannot hear any word of knowledge if you don't go out to win souls. Because word of knowledge is not for the bedroom. It's when you go out to win souls that God will tell you, this person is going through an affliction. That's when God will tell you, this person needs a child. That's when God will tell you, this person's ear is not functioning well. So a man who is not serving cannot hear. You will not hear things about children until you are serving in children's ministry. Go to church after this uh, conference and find out people who always say, God told me. You will notice that 80% of the time, what they hear is around the area of their service. A man who is a soul winner will be strong in word of knowledge and healing. A man who is attending to children will be strong in the gift of word of wisdom because he needs to give direction so service activates dimension first corinthians chapter 4 verse 1 paul was speaking and he said we are ministers of christ servants of christ he said and because of that we are stewards of the mysteries of god so the mysteries of the scripture will not come to you until you are neck deep in service in our generation today they beg people to serve you'll see not see them Meanwhile, when you go to the era of the fathers, the way they punish people in church is that they will tell you, you will no longer sweep. So when you want to punish people in church, you will take responsibility for the, from them. You will no longer be an usher. You will no longer sweep the church. And people will be begging to sweep. People will be begging to be ushering. But in our generation, tell somebody, carry this wire from here, chook here. He will say it's 2,000. And we think we'll be enlarged. 
That's why we are blind and deaf. There is no service in our quiver. Those days, people beg. You will see somebody buy keyboard, carry that keyboard to church because church does not have keyboard, and he will play it. After service, he will, he will be happy that he brought his keyboard and pray and play. Today, put keyboard there. Tell somebody come and pray. He say, um, my charge for two hours is twenty thousand. And we say we will be big. That's why when you check them, 20 years, they are where they are. Even the ones that have become big, the moment they put money, they start going down. You know what Paul said? 1 Corinthians 9, 18. He said, when I preach the gospel, I did it free of charge. Because it is in service that greatness is born. And one of the technologies of betting greatness is that the more you serve, the more God speaks to you. Those words that come to you is what makes you invincible. Number four. How do you access the world? Is by sustaining meekness. James 1.21 You will see what the Bible said. When a man becomes meek, the word of God comes to him. He said, the meek shall he teach knowledge. He said, wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word. So if there is no meekness, you can't receive the word. The meek shall he teach in knowledge shall he teach in judgment so a man who wants to receive god's word must sustain meekness as a way of life number five how do you get access to the world by sustaining the fear of the lord mama was talking a moment ago he said this is the conclusion of the matter fear god and obey his commandments this is a godless generation fearless generation people are in church they are chatting the holy ghost is moving People are gisting. And then you are wondering, are you okay? Are you not aware that he's the king of kings moving? Meanwhile, every day you see these fathers, the moment they come, they kneel down. Show reverence. As big as they are. Bishop David Oedeko said something. He said when he sits down there in service, everybody knows you can't talk to him. Because when God is talking, no man talks. That's fear for God. They tremble at the voice of God. When God rebuked this man, they stop everything. Go for retreat for two weeks, for one month. But our generation, when God speaks, you say, all right, God, I'm coming. We will discuss that matter later. There is something to do. And we want to be big. We are jokers. There's no fear for God. The Bible said in Isaiah 11 verse 2, it said, out of Jesse, he plucked out a root. And he said, upon him is the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of understanding. And he said, the spirit of the fear of the Lord. And he said, he shall make him of a quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. He repeated the fear of the Lord twice. And because of the fear of the Lord, he said, he shall no longer judge after the sight of his eyes or the hearing of his ear. That's what kept him ahead of his generation. The fear of the Lord. Finally, if you want to receive the word of God, you must become sensitive to the Holy Spirit. In John 16, 13, he said, I have many things to tell you. He said, but you cannot receive it. How be it when the spirit of truth is come? He said he will guide you into all truth. So it is the work of the Spirit to bring you into the operation and the reality of the Word of God. But the problem is some people grieve the Holy Ghost and some quench the Holy Ghost. You cannot hear the Word from the Holy Spirit if you grieve Him. And you cannot hear the Word from the Holy Ghost if you quench Him. How do you quench the Holy Ghost? By refusing to do what He told you to do. If the Holy Ghost tells you, Give to this person and you don't, you quench him. If he says, go out and win souls and you don't, you quench him. So when you refuse to do what the Holy Ghost tells you to do, you quench him. First Thessalonians 2.19, it says, quench not the spirit. And then you greet the Holy Ghost by not by doing what he says you should not do. Don't fornicate, you are a fornicator. Don't lie, you are a liar. The Holy Ghost will be grieved. And when the Holy Ghost is grieved, or the Holy Ghost is quenched. His oracles are withdrawn from you. That's the problem with many. And this is why we don't have access to the word of God. No matter how big you are, the day you stop hearing God, that day you start dying. The Bible said in 1 Samuel chapter 3 from verse 1, it said in those days, the voice of God was cast. And there were no open vision. And the evil lamp in the temple had gone out. Although Eli had the reputation of the high priest, but there was nothing happening in Israel until a little boy called Samuel came who knew the fear of God 
who was willing to obey God. That was when God started speaking again. So if you are not sensitive to God, you will not hear God's voice. When you start hearing God's voice, then your word begins to enlarge. And the instruments that enlarge your word are wisdom, power, faith, love, understanding. All of those things is as God speaks that they are implanted. When God speaks to you, power comes. When God speaks to you, wisdom comes. Those are the things you write on to enlarge your word. But the question is, how do you administer what God tells you? Because many times, what God will tell you, he will tell you to apply. So there is a way to also apply the word of God. You don't apply the word of God haphazardly. You don't apply the word of God carelessly. Listen, I'm giving you an understanding that will change your life. How do you apply the word of God? There are five ways of applying the word of God. Number one is by faith and boldness. If God speaks to you, don't say, I'm a child. He told Jeremiah, after he spoke to him, Jeremiah was afraid. And he said, don't say, I'm a child. Because when God speaks, God watches it to perform it. So you must learn that for you to speak the word of God, you must speak it by faith and in the spirit of boldness. In 2 Corinthians 4, 13, Paul said, according as it is written, he said, they believe and have spoken. He said, we having the same spirit of faith, we believe and therefore we speak. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verse 9, 29, the Bible said, when the disciples prayed, and they were filled again with the Holy Ghost. He said the place where they were was shaken. And they speak the word with boldness. Why is it important to speak the word with boldness? If you don't speak it with boldness and faith, you will not see the power. He said whoever cometh to him, Hebrews 11, 6, must believe that he is and is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. He said by faith the elders obtain a good report. So you must speak the word in faith and boldness if you will see power number two how do you administer the word you administer the word in truth in truth Ephesians 4 15 it says speaking the truth so the word must be truth for it to be powerful in 2nd Corinthians 4 from verse 1 and 2 it says having received this ministry of the Lord the message of the Lord he said we faint not and he began to show us how they administer the word. Go to verse 2 quickly. Thank you so much. He said, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. Not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. He said, but by the manifestation of the truth, commenting our conscience to every man in the sight of God. Our generation will lie too much. Say what God says, leave the rest to God. It's not your work to perform. He said, as thou knowest not how the bones are formed in the womb of her that is with child. He says, so knowest not thou the ways of the spirit. Ecclesiastes 11 verse 5. When God said, tell somebody you are healed. Don't come and say, oh, I'm seeing a movement in the realm. And I'm seeing a finger from heaven. And that finger is touching your head, so you are healed. God didn't say that. You are healed. You may go to another person and God may put a lot of mysteries in your mouth. Say it. But in the day when God is not talking mystery, be plain. The day when God is talking mystery, talk mystery. But don't, don't, don't put God in a corner. That's why many, some people want to talk to you. They jump, you are not a herbalist. You don't have to, to, to do all the drama before you say what God is saying. If the Holy Ghost is overwhelming you, the Holy Ghost is overwhelming you. But if the Holy Ghost is not overwhelming you, stand and say it. You are not the one generating the power. You are not the one producing the result. It is God that worketh in us, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. If you don't say the word in truth, the word will not produce result. The third way to administer the word of God is in love. Ephesians 4, 5, 15. Speaking the truth in love. Any truth that will tear somebody down, don't say it. It will take a lot of wisdom and administration to say it. Most of what we say, we say today and we call truth. We're actually putting, pulling people down. There's a lot of maliciousness in it. There's a lot of envy in it. There's a lot of manipulation in it. And there's a lot of wickedness. 
This is a generation where somebody claims he wants to tell you the truth, but he wants to put a scandal on you. Somebody says he's telling you the truth. He wants to label you a rebel. He says he's telling you the truth. He wants to label you as somebody that nobody should go close to. And when he's done talking the truth, that person will never recover. When we speak the truth, we build people up. It's not to destroy them. And that's why we must speak it in love. Now, when you speak in faith, there is power. When you speak in truth, there is discernment and sanctification. He said, the word that's spoken to you have watched you. When you speak in love, there is the impartation of the nature of God. Because God is love. And then number four, you must speak with grace. Colossians chapter 4 verse 6. He said, let your words be seasoned with grace. Let your words be seasoned with grace. Let it be, be percolated with salt. So that the hearer might be edified. So any truth you speak that does not build up is a wrong administration of the word of God. He said, prophecy comes to edify. And the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. We don't speak the truth in grace. We don't speak the word in grace. So people hear us, they are destroyed. People hear us, they are discouraged. There are times when the Holy Ghost purges people. There are times when the Holy Ghost brings judgment to people. But generally speaking, the words of God comes to edify. But it will only edify when it is seasoned with grace. Please, when you are talking, talk with kindness. Talk with mercy. Talk with understanding. Talk with courtesy. Talk with respect. When let your words to people bring out the dignity of humanity in them. Don't talk to people and they feel less of themselves. When you preach the gospel of the kingdom, it empowers men. That was why Jesus spoke to fishermen. They took their word. What kind of word was he speaking to them? That we make fishermen who are misfit of society suddenly become bold, suddenly become assured of a destiny that was bigger than them because Jesus spoke with grace. If you don't speak with grace, the administration of the word in your life will be useless. And finally, when you speak, speak in humility because when you speak in humility god will endorse it he said in james 4 10 he said god resisted the proud but he giveth more grace to the humble if you administer the word in this manner there is no way your word will not be enlarged and when your word is enlarged three things will happen number one your inner capacity will be enlarged from your mind to your emotions to your will an enlargement is conformity to god's standard enlargement is alignment to god's program that's the first enlargement that you will receive the second enlargement you will receive if you do the ministry of the world is that kingdom will be enlarged through you the evangelism will become bigger the church will become bigger the influence and the weight of your voice on your generation will become bigger and finally your nation will be enlarged through you there are men that their presence in a nation is what makes that nation relevant. So they are not just enlarging themselves. The kingdom is not just enlarged, but their nations become enlarged through them. You see our father today, it's evident that God has helped him. One man can speak. Sometimes I, I, I watch the Holy Ghost service and I'm wondering, how can millions of people gather physically to hear one man? How? There's enlargement. There's enlargement. So his spirit can address them. That's why they gather. Your congregation will always reduce to the size of your spirit. There's no magic about it. If your capacity is 10, if you like, litter the whole city will be bored. It's 10 people that will come. Because God does not handle souls carelessly. So when you see such things happening, it gives you an idea of how big in Christ the person is. And then that's not all. You now see the ministry that God has committed to him. The size of the RCCG. You know that the work of God truly has been enlarged through this man. And then finally, the nation where they are. Presidents come out of here. Vice presidents come out of here. Governors, ministers come out of here. So when they speak, certain things can happen in the, in the nation that is positive because of their presence. That's what enlargement is about. And I'm not saying this thing to to create any form of impression some people are too big to make impression with them i'm saying this to encourage you because this is the umbrella under which you sit and in case you have not been inspired enough to make certain decisions this is the time you must engage the word of god there are most of us here who are weak 
when it has to do with the word. We either don't engage the word, or we don't obey the word, or we don't receive the word, or we don't apply the word. This morning, God wants to give us a fresh baptism of men that the word of God will become powerful through their lives. Men, that through them, the word of God will pass through to affect their generation and to change their world. In Isaiah 60 verse 15, he said, you were a desolate place. He said, no man walked through thee. He said, but I will make you an eternal excellency, the joy of many generations. This morning, I want to make another call. There are some of us, what we suffer is weakness. We just can't carry the word and study. We can't meditate on it. We can't obey it. For some of us, what we suffer is a particular addiction, pornography, masturbation. And these things have choked the life of God from our spirits. Although the destiny is great, you are supposed to be the next apostle for the next generation, the next prophet for the next generation, the next leader that the generation will see. But you are neck deep in masturbation. And that addiction has made it difficult to walk in the world. And for some of us, distraction. We can't even hear the word. Facebook has become a grave. Instagram has become a grave. And so many great potentials not being realized. And there are some of us here, although we receive the word, but there's no wisdom to administer it. This morning, God wants to activate the ministry of the word in the life of someone. You may not have received Christ before. You may have received Christ, but you have backslided and so the word is not finding expression in your life. I know some of you may have answered another call, but there are some here who have not. And I came to you by the message of God, a messenger in a generation, to summon you to that place where God ordains men. If you are hearing me now, and you know these things have shared, it's not your reality. And because Jesus is not at the center of your life, this is your moment. Run to the front quickly. There's a baptism about to take place here. I just want to be where you are Dwelling daily in your presence I don't want to worship from afar Draw me near to where you are Keep coming, don't be ashamed, don't wait for anybody I just want to be where you are in your dwelling place forever take me to the place where you are i just want to be with you i want to be where you are dwelling in your presence feasting at your table surrounded by in your presence that's where i always want to be i just want to be i just want to be with you now hear me there are many things you will drop here i'm telling you some of you came here to find a boyfriend you came to find a girlfriend and you already succeeded because you spoke to somebody on the first day you have sent a message ten times and you know there's darkness in your soul there's nothing wrong in meeting people in the conference like this you can find your wife you can find your husband but if what is pushing you is not of god you came to kill yourself you know why the mercy seat where mercy is received from people can die there he said, for this cause, many are weak. He said, many are sick. And he said, many die, not discerning the lost body. This same ground where God makes men, God can keep. And if you want your life to count, you have to drop it. You know, I told you, the heaviest thing I taught this morning is the place of obedience. The place of obedience is the divide between engaging the word and receiving the word. That, that means that's the focal point. 
and there are many things you need to come out of if you will sincerely tell God this morning to help you that thing will end forever if you will be sincere Lord this masturbation will end today Lord this gambling will end today Lord this fornication will end today Lord this lying will end today if you will be sincere and you say help me help me he said they that call upon the name of the Lord they shall be saved tomorrow I will do power but this morning we want to do business with the war it's a conscious thing it's not emotional say when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word what a glory is shed on our way when we do his good wills he abides with us still and with those who will trust and obey trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in jesus but to trust and obey when we walk with the lord in the light of his word what a glory talk to jesus now some of you are sitting down you know you should be here the window of mercy is still open the door of mercy is still open join them now this is why we came so trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in jesus but to trust and obey i want to pray for you When my mom died in 2010, I was so heartbroken. I said, what is the prayer for? What is the fasting for? What is the study of the word for? I was offended at God and I went back to the world. In one year, I was into clubbing, drinking alcohol, because for me, it's not worth it. But the mercy of God found me again. He said, there's an, there's an investment on your life. There's a prophecy. You can't waste. There are some of you who are here. Something hurt you. That's why you are where you are. But it's the way the devil deceives people and lures them from God. And when God restored me in 2011, set me on fire. And said, what you believed was not a lie. But it will take sincerity of heart. Now, place your right hand on your chest. I will lead you in a prayer and then I'll make a declaration over you. For some of you, the hand of God will come on you now. You will find yourself crying by the Spirit. Not because anything made you cry. It's the Spirit of God Himself. Put your hand on your chest. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sins. I confess with my mouth that He is the Lord of my life. Because of his resurrection, I receive eternal life into my spirit. Thank you, Father, for accepting me. In Jesus' precious name, I have prayed. If you are rededicating yourself to the Lord, pray this prayer with me. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I repent. I have wandered away from your presence. But today I return in sincerity. Forgive my sins. Receive me into your family again. And Lord, give me a purpose. As I leave this conference, by the help of your grace, cause me to stand forever. In Jesus' precious name. Now lift your right hand. In one minute. I want you to be sensitive now. In just one minute, the fear of the Lord will fall here. Is an aura of his presence. As that fear descends here, some of you will start quaking. Some of you will start crying. Some of you will collapse. It's a personal encounter. Because that's what he told me he will do this morning. He said he made him of a quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus this morning, 
with every hand lifted according to your word let there be a fresh baptism of the fear of the Lord the same fear that the prophets of old had what cost Abraham to quake to run with Isaac for sacrifice what caused Moses to quake at your presence and what caused our fathers to quake at your presence not to take your presence for granted father in the name of Jesus according to your word let the aura of the fear of the Lord descend upon this one take that grace now just play the keyboard for one minute close your eyes and lift your hands there is a baptism coming some of you will start crying. Some of you will literally collapse and quake. That atmosphere is coming upon you. Mere havakia. Barosa freste fila bungra talagaza. Zezeze vrehili gazis taragaos. Zabinalo mentivia sacreste. Rakibundo sevrenei.